This lecture will discuss chapter 4 in our textbook, Formulating the Methods. And uh, this lecture will go over how to write the methods section for a journal article, a thesis, a master's research study, and for our class, you'll use this information for the research study assignment. Uh, the method section typically will include uh, descriptions of the study's design, the participants, instruments, study procedures, and data analysis. I'll go over each one of these sections in detail. As a reminder, where are we in the nine steps of research? Uh, we've already done steps one through five at this point, if we were doing a, a, a study. We have already identified our research problem. We've been reviewing the literature. Now, reviewing the literature is an ongoing process. We develop our hypotheses. Then we specify a purpose for the research, from which we develop a purpose statement and research questions. Then we're going to develop operational definitions, delimitations, limitations, and assumptions. Now we're at the step number six where we are developing our methods to test our hypothesis. Other way to look at it is the methods to answer our research question. Then we also will collect data, which means we are doing this study. We are actually collecting data. That's what data collection means. You're doing the study. So uh, if we want to explain our study to others, we have to write a paper and explain it to them. Uh, there's different sections that you'll see in journal articles. Uh, if you come across thesis or dissertations, um, you'll come across these types of sections in these papers. Uh, some journal articles will not include the study design, but most of them do. Uh, it's good to know what kind of study uh, methods or design did the researcher have in mind when he or she did the study. Uh, you specifically tell them um, th this study used a quasi-experimental design or was it a one-shot design? Was it a survey design? Was it a descriptive research? It was a correlational research. Uh, again, we'll be talking about all those different study designs later in this class. So you need to tell the, the reader what kind of design was used. Then you also want to provide a description of the variables that were measured and tested and real brief description of the instrumentation that was used. Again, we're going to have a uh, description of, of the instrument later in this particular area for this uh, pa for a paper. This is this section is real brief, couple couple sentences. It's not that long. It's just giving the reader the understanding of what kind of methods or what kind of design that you use and what were the variables and how were they tested using the instrument. It's sort of like an introduction. The next uh, area is describing our participants. The participants are the subjects in the study. Um, you know, and we want to know the people that were involved. And most of the stuff that we're going to do in our research in the kinesiology area will involve people. We're not working on rats or mice. Uh, we're working with people and we're trying to figure out uh, how behavior has changed typically. Um, if it's educational, educational research, have they, is there a knowledge? Has the education changed? If it's on the, any other things, again, and we're typically dealing with people, participants, subjects are the, the words that we use to describe the people in our study. Um, what we want to tell the readers when we're describing these things, were there any special characteristics uh, that relates back to the study, to our purpose statement, to our uh, problem, to our um, the reason why we did this study? 
What's the age of those subjects? What's the mean age? What gender did we have? Well, we have male and females. How many males? How many females? What was the average age of the people in the study? Um, did we classify them in a particular area? Did we, was there one group that was training and there was and the other group wasn't training? Did we have a group of in a control group versus a, an experimental group? Um, were, were there things, were there uh, subjects that were more experienced than the other? So it's just we want to tell the reader any specific special characteristics about that group of subjects that are, were in our study. We also need to tell the reader how many subjects there were. There was a total of 259 uh, subjects in the study. We also need to tell them how we went about getting these subjects to participate in our study. That's called recruitment. And, uh, and in a later part in this class, I believe it's covered in the statistical uh, section of our class, we'll talk about the sampling procedures. We talk about how we have a population and then we pull a sample out of that population. There are different ways to uh, pull samples from a population and we need to describe our sampling procedures uh, with doing that in this particular section of the paper. We also need to tell the readers how we uh, protect, protected the participants from harm. Um, in a later uh, podcast, uh, you'll read about, or you'll read the, in the chapter five, but also listen to the uh, IRB uh, procedures and how we protect human subjects uh, and different ethical issues with dealing with humans we want to make sure that they're safe. We need to make sure that they're safe before they start participating in any research study. After we describe the research design and describe all our participants, if we are using any kind of instruments, now an instrument is anything that we use to um, test our subjects. So that can be a weight scale, it can be a vertical jump uh, thing, whatever that thing's called, the vertical jump um, jumper measuring thing. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it can be dumbbells. It can be uh, surveys. It can be blood tests. Uh, so it's anything that we're using to measure subjects for our study. So we need to provide a description of, of that particular instrument. Um, needs to be fairly detailed. Uh, readers should be able to understand how to use that instrument after you've read it, after they've read the description. So it needs to include the validity and reliability. Uh, reliability is something that can consistently be um, measured accurately over and over again. Validity is that it actually measures what it, it is intended to measure. So if you're using the vertical jump thing, it's designed to measure vertical jump and it is, has reliability that it will measure uh, vertical jump. There are, in most other research studies, when you're reading it, you'll see that they provide information typically about the reliability more into validity. But you need to include that. We can do statistical tests on reliability. You just need to report that. Again, we need to describe how it's used and how it's scored. And this should be quick and dirty to the point, but it should be uh, understandable that somebody else who has some familiarity to the information could turn around and also use that instrument and score it. If it's a brand new instrument, uh, you need to describe how it was developed. Uh, for my dissertation, I had to develop a survey, so I had to have a pretty long dis uh, discussion on how I developed the questionnaire that I used in my dissertation. You can see that in my chapter three that's in the course documents. Uh, that I did a pilot study to make sure that it was, the 
the questionnaire is valid and reliable, um, then I can do my study. So I have to provide a description of how it was developed. If it's if the instrument is an existing instrument, again, we'll use the vertical jump thingy. Uh, you don't need to describe how it was developed. Uh, the next section, which is going to be the longest section in this area, is describing the procedures or describing the methods, uh, the research methods. Uh, you want to describe what will happen, um, when will it happen, where will it happen, how much time will it take, um, you need to tell the reader how you'll get the data. That's the scheme for data acquisition. What steps will you take to collect data? How will it be recorded? And how was everything scored? I also need to say uh, how long, how intense, and how often all the treatments will take place. Uh, how will you make sure that all your participa participants will actually do what they're supposed to do? We'll talk later in the class about um, internal validity. How are you going to make sure that the participants aren't um, messing up your study by doing extra, if say we're testing uh, strength gain with doing biceps curl, how, you, how do you know that they're not going out and doing more exercises? than what you want them to do if they're in the treatment group. Um, so describe what will happen and how you will plan the treatments or the experiment or if it's a survey how will you plan all that, how are you going to get all the surveys out, how will you uh, recruit the people to do the survey, all those type of things. The big thing is when it's been the, the procedures are written Another person should be able to reproduce the study just by reading that section. Um, the people who are reading should have basic understanding of research methodology, and so they should be able to read it and then reproduce that study by just reading your section in the uh, research methods section or the procedures section. Uh, the last section in the methods um, part is describing data analysis. You need to tell the reader what kind of statistical test will be used, um, what computer software will, was used, and what level of significance will be used. So in the class we'll discuss uh, statistics and then the level of significance will hopefully make sense after you go through statistics. That's the 0.05 level of statistics. Um, the hypothesis will be was analyzed using the t-test um, or the ANOVA test. Uh, when you're reading journal articles you'll see all these things. Uh, right now you may not understand any of that stuff. Hopefully after you read the textbook and go over the statistics podcast you'll have some understanding of that um, but you just need to report what kind of stats uh, were used the computer software is typically going to be SPSS and we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into the stats section again you're just reporting how you collect all this data how it's going to be analyzed Hopefully this has been helpful for you to understand the method section of uh, a research paper or a journal article because they should have all these uh, components within them.